Few people know it, but in this 200-year-old Hampshire cottage there lives a dangerous voice. The voice of Goldfinger. Oh, Mr. Bond, sit down, please. A mint julep, traditional but satisfying. You know, you disappoint me, Goldfinger. Operation Grand Slam won't work and Delta 9 nerve gas is lethal. And this atomic device is obviously in this country. Obviously. But bringing it to Fort Knox could be risky. On the contrary, Mr. Bond, the risk is all on your side. If the authorities should attempt to locate it, who knows where it might be exploded then? Eh? The submarine pens at Fort London? Cape Kennedy? Near the White House? But we are speculating idly. Operation Grand Slam will be successful. You'll be there to see for yourself. Too close for comfort, I'm afraid. I don't think many people know. I mean, I give lots of talks. And when I talk about revoicing, people look, you can see the way people react. Golfing was revoiced? What, you know, they have no idea. Well, luckily enough, I won't be. I know this isn't mint julep and I don't wear a Savile Row suit. But substitute Wayne for Bond and Michael Collins for Goldfinger and you've just seen the most famous scene in the most famous film of last year, Goldfinger. Well, how did I do as Bond? I thought you were pretty good, David. Well, I'd better not comment on your performance, I suppose, in case odd jobs are around. Ah, oh, no, let's be quite too loud. It wasn't my performance, it was Gert Frobe's performance. Let's say it's like a crossword puzzle. Mr. Frobe had all the answers, he knew all the answers, produced them pretty well, but his vocal pencil was blunt and I just went in and outlined what he'd said. But Fortunately, our voices have about the same weight. Revoicing people in films is very, very rare. In my career, I don't ever remember anyone ever being revoiced because you cast according to the, the actor that you require. But once on the Bond films, they were making every effort to get somebody that was appropriate for the part that they looked for and sounded for. And then you got into difficult water. When Covey and um, Harry saw the rushes, uh, they, they were absolutely appalled and they, <laughs> I think they went bananas, I think was his actual expression. Well, it wasn't so much that he couldn't speak English. What he'd done was he'd, he'd learnt his lines previously the night before, power of fashion, and that's the only way you can say it. So obviously Guy would have detected, I mean, before Covey and Harry would have complained, he would, I would have thought, would have realised when he was shooting that even though he could do the scene, he obviously wasn't going to be able to keep the voice. And he would have known that in the world of films, you can revoice if you have to. Huge decision, mind you. But it was too late by then. Doesn't it gall you that Gert Froh gets all the acclamation and you get well, virtually none, none at all, in fact? No one realises you even played the part. Well, let's say it's all part of the export drive, and I suppose the concentration should be on exports. And the film, after all, has produced about 14 million this far. Well, it's, it's like any kind of casting, really, whether you're casting someone for their visual effect, whether their acting performance. They had many actors came in and, and recorded that just... Uh, I can't remember the exact scene now, but they were all given the same scene to, to record. I was given the job of making, making them look fairly synchronised, and then we sat back and, and watched. And obviously, whatever Michael Collins did... He was selected. Somebody had to be selected. If it hadn't been him, it would have been someone else. Do you expect me to talk? No, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die. Don't you ever confuse your own identity? Well, it can be very embarrassing. I remember a little while ago, I was in the north of England trying to get some blue pyjamas, size 46. And rather, um, had a shop assistant said, I'm very sorry, sir, but we've only got green pyjamas in size 46. So I said, well, that's all right, then we'll have the green. <laughs> Well, for me, at any rate, you'll always be Goldfinger. Unfortunately, Mr. Bond, I have told you far too much about myself. A job! Whoever brought in the actors, that would have been the production manager almost certainly, he would have brought, wouldn't have brought in any old actors. He would have thought of people that he felt would have been suitable for the part. And then it was a question of which one of those really had hit the jackpot and of course Michael Collins' performance is beyond belief. I, even to this day I look at that piece of revoicing as being a masterpiece. I, I, I find myself forgetting it's Michael Collins and that's saying something for someone been in the business and on the film.